Good evening. The Senate is locked and loaded tonight, taking aim at the most explosive, divisive and controversial issue facing America right now. Guns. You know where I stand. I don't want to outlaw all guns, just the ones that are more at home in the army. The testimony of the hearings over banning assault weapons is tearful and heated. Here's one blistering exchange over background checks between Senator Lindsey Graham and Milwaukee Police Chief Edward Flynn. If it's such a, uh, an important issue, why aren't we prosecuting people who fail a background check? And there are 15 questions there. They're not hard to understand if you're filling out the form. So I'm a bit frustrated that we say one thing, how important it is, but in the real world, we absolutely do nothing to enforce the laws on the books. Now, let's talk... Uh, I mean, you know, just... For the record, from my point of view, Senator, the purpose how of the background check... How many cases have you made? How many cases uh, you know what, have you... It doesn't matter. It's a paper thing. Well, I, want it, to I want to stop 76... I, I want to finish wait, wait, the answer. Wait, wait. Well, no, I'm asking, I want to stop 76,000 people from buying guns illegally. That's what a background check I'm does. AR if you think we're going to do paperwork prosecutions, you're, you're wrong. Joining me now is Senator Dianne Feinstein, who's chairing today's Judiciary Committee hearing on the assault weapons ban she's introducing. Uh, welcome, Senator. Tell me about Thank what you. happened today. It seemed very emotional. It was very emotional. It began with the testimony of Neil Heslin, um, a father of a youngster who was the light of his life, uh, who was killed. And it was very emotional. And then Dr. Begg, uh, who was a trauma doctor who uh, took care of some of the young people, um, who talked with us about what these weapons do, how they tear apart small bodies, and um, some interesting uh, confrontations between a uh, senator and a great and awesome chief of police of Milwaukee, I thought, really a cop's cop, uh, who really knew what it's like on the streets. And I think this is one of the issues, Piers, that people say, you know, I have an AR-15 and I take good care of it. And I say to them, no problem. But when you have the grievance killer, when you have the mental case, when they're attracted to these weapons to carry out a grievance crime, and when these weapons can carry clips so big, up to 100 rounds, that no one can disarm them, they can go out and just slaughter people. And when it happens to six-year-olds, it's time for this country to take action. And I think it's a matter of public policy. It's right to say weapons of war, weapons that are designed to kill large numbers of people in close combat, don't belong on the streets of our cities. I mean, I couldn't agree with you more, as you know, but there are I critics know. out there who say you haven't got a cat in hell's chance of getting this through, that no way is there going to be a new assault weapons ban, which I find extremely dispiriting. But are you just going to take that, or do you believe there is a genuine prospect of achieving this? Look, I've been on a mission, I've been a mayor, I've walked into crime scenes, I've seen police outgunned. A crime scene with these weapons isn't like it's on TV. There's blood and matter just spread all over the place. Um, it's terrible. And people just, their bodies get hacked apart. Uh, I think the time has come to say enough is enough. And if I can win this, I don't know. But if the people of America stand up, every single poll taken has shown that more than a majority of people want this assault weapons legislation passed. The NRA is very heavy. They lobby heavy. Uh, members may be frightened. But I say it's time to stand up and do what's right for this country. I want to play just a clip from Neil Heslin. You mentioned him earlier. I interviewed him last night. He's an incredibly inspiring man he's he's so moving and so eloquent and yet so simple in the way That's that he right. says what he says listen to what he said today it was 904 when i dropped jesse off the school clock <clears throat> jesse gave me a hug and a kiss at that time he said goodbye i love you he stopped and he said i love mom too that was the last I saw Jesse as he ducked around the corner. Prior to that, when he was getting out of the truck, he hugged me and held me. And I can still feel that hug and the pat on the back. He said, everything's going to be okay, Dad. It's all going to be okay. And it wasn't okay. 
I mean, Senator, it's, it's heartbreaking listening to him, but it makes me so angry, too, that somebody like Neil Heslin, who, as he said to me last night, he believes in the Second Amendment, he believes in an American's right to own a gun to defend themselves, but he cannot understand why in the aftermath to a mass shooting where his son was blown to pieces by a military-style assault rifle, America is not racing to bring in a control that stops further children facing that kind of slaughter. Well, that's right. Every one of those children had between 3 and 11 bullets in them. And the time has come. And America and the mothers and the fathers have to stand up. And they have to say enough is enough. Neil Heslin breaks your heart. I mean, this youngster was the light of his life. Every promise, every dream lay ahead of him. And all these children were to their par parents. And they're all gone. And you have these brave young women who went in there, who put their arms out, who protected them, who got riddled with bullets. Is this the America we want to live in? It isn't the America I want to live in. Senator, I just want to read you what Wayne Lapierre from the NRA said about you personally on Saturday night. Diane Feinstein herself com commented that she's had her gun ban legislation in her desk for over a year, waiting for the right time. Really? Waiting for an unspeakable act to occur so the American people can be persuaded into her political agenda, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, very patronizing, uh, pretty insulting, and coming from a man who, it seems to me, his sole modus operandi at the moment is to try and guarantee no controls are brought in which will prohibit the sale of more guns. Well, that's right. They oppose everything. Uh, they've made it difficult for the BATF, the alcohol, tobacco and firearms industry to do their job. They have made it difficult to keep data. They have made the law difficult to do proper research. All, also, that also that manufacturers of weapons can produce more. And then they press all of this. So it's a gun culture. That gun culture is letting bad things happen. Well, you're doing a fantastic job on this, Senator, and I, I absolutely applaud you and urge oh, you to Pierce, continue. Oh, Pierce, thank Before you. I... You've been wonderful. Thank you so much for your help. It is uphill all the way. Senator Feinstein, as always, thank you very much indeed. You're very welcome. Thank you. Joining me now is Dr. William.